Congratulations. You've progressed to lesson number six. I'm assuming that you stopped the tape and spent a few hours working on your basic arc. You've got good swing rhythm and you can hit the ball to a target. If so, now we're ready to expand your arc into a full swing. First we'll do a three quarter, then a full swing. We're doing this, we're expanding the arc because, as you know, the basic arc hits the ball about 50 yards and we want you to hit it about 250 with the same amount of centrifugal force that you had before, or the same amount of effort or momentum. We're going to expand the arc in two ways. First, we're going to raise the arms higher on the backswing. And secondly, we're going to bend the right arm and hinge the left wrist. Okay, we're going to create a free hinge in the left wrist. We'll talk about this in detail. The main point I want to make as we start this is that the power plant stays exactly the same. You're going to coil and uncoil in exactly the same manner that you did before. Before we bring on my next victim, my next pupil, I'd like to take a minute to talk about wrist action. It's so vitally important in a good golf swing. Now there are three possible motions that the wrist can make. First of all, the wrist can flap back and forth, they can roll, or they can hinge vertically at the base of the thumbs. And this is the motion that we're concerned with right now, the vertical hinging of the wrist at the base of the thumb. What that does to have that, is takes your basic arc, which is a one lever swing, the first lever being your club and your left arm. Now we're going to hinge it here, we're going to have two levers. And if we do that, what happens on the downswing from this position, if we're here now, that we have the lever, if, if this joint functions freely like a door hinge with no restriction by tension in your muscles, if you're dropping the club down toward the ball, which we'll talk about, that club head is a lot farther away from the ball than it was before. It used to be down here, now it's up here. And in the time that the, you, your left hand moves from here to here, that little bit, that club head's going to move from here all the way down to the ball in the same amount of time, which means it's going to have to be moving much faster. So we're going to increase your club head speed by adding that free hinge for the same amount of momentum that you've been creating with your power plant in the basic arc. Okay, I say that it has to be a free hinge because if you tighten that joint up, centrifugal force won't be able to release the club back to its position, to its square position at impact. You'll, I'll talk more about this later too. You'll be fighting that tendency to release and you won't hit a good shot. Now let's build a three-quarter swing from a basic arc with another person. I have a student who's going to come on now, John Lieb. John's uh, either an advanced beginner or a beginning intermediate golfer. And we spent a few minutes looking at John's basic arc the other day, and now we're going to, right on camera, we're going to teach John the three-quarter backswing and the full backswing and hope that it helps you at the same time. Hi, John. Hi, Mike. We're going to use John to demonstrate the three-quarter backswing right now. I'm going to start him out in the lighthouse turn position. You notice if I slide John's hand down, the club a little bit for the sake of demonstration. If he bends his right arm now, his right elbow into his side, one of two things is going to happen. Either his left arm is going to bend, which we don't want, believe me, or his left wrist and right wrist are going to hinge at the base of the thumbs. That's what we're looking for, okay? Let's put that back in the right position. We'll do that again. We'll bend. Try this at home. Bend that right arm into the side and see if you can get a, what we call 90 degree wrist cock here. One lever swing became a two lever swing. Now, from this position, if John were to just make his basic coil move, like you do in the lighthouse turn the basic arc, you'll find that instead of being in the basic arc, he's now in the three-quarter backswing. That's all there is to it, okay? I want you to notice a couple points about John's backswing here, his three-quarter backswing. He's still got his right pivot point set. He's coiled, and you'll notice that the club is actually resting on his left thumb here. Okay, the wrist joint, as I mentioned before, is free. There's no tension in it, and his elbows are close together. Now, the question you might be asking yourself is, what happens now? I'm hoping that you can answer that question already 
because it's very similar to what you've already learned. The only difference between the downswing and the three-quarter swing and the basic arc, which you already know, is that instead of the entire Y dropping down like it did before, what's going to happen now is John's right elbow is going to drop into his side and the butt end of the club is going to drop right toward the ball as John starts his unwinding motion by what? Setting his left pivot point, shifting his weight, creating that centrifugal force. So the arms are still dropping, but now you feel as if the butt end of the club is going to drop down and hit the ball. And if John's unwinding motion creates enough centrifugal force, that release will be delayed, and at the last possible instant, as we talked about before, whoo, the centrifugal force will release that club head in the ball at maximum speed, and his arms will actually be pulled into the follow-through, as we discussed before in the rhythm chapter. Okay, he'll feel the peak speed in the follow-through. That looks tremendous. John, would you like to demonstrate now the three-quarter backswing and downswing that you just learned for us? Good. Four legs. Okay, good. Now I'd like to try one. I'll demonstrate one for you. I might even hit a ball for you now. The point I want to make, the key element here, the difference between the, the basic arc and the three-quarter swing is that now as I'm making my basic arc, I bend that right elbow into the side and let this club hinge freely so that the club rests on my left thumb. Okay? The downswing, the club, the butt end of the club will drop right toward the ball as my arms fall in the downswing like they did in the basic arc. So let the butt end fall, and before you know it, centrifugal force will release that free hinge. The club head will speed through the ball and pull your arms into the follow-through arc. Watch. Piece of cake, right? Okay, we brought John back to show us the full back swing now. Okay, we're going to move into the full swing from the three quarter swing. John, would you make your three quarter back swing for us? The only difference between the three quarter back swing and the full back swing is simply. John's just going to raise his arms a little bit more, not very much even, okay? The right elbow is going to come up from the side. It's, it's next to the side in the three-quarter swing. It's going to come up from the side a little bit now, okay? You'll notice that John's elbows are relatively close together. Some players like to fan that right elbow up here or even pull it way over here in the back swing. There's really no advantage to it, okay? I can't understand why or what value this type of move has in the back swing. You notice when John's in this position, the proper position, there's still some space in the triangle. The club hasn't, his left arm hasn't been flattened against his side. And he's in a much better position to drop the club down right at the ball. Okay? Thank you, John. I'd like to make one or two other important points about the full backswing. This one's a little bit unusual, and you may not have heard it before. And at first, it might sound like I'm trying to complicate matters. But after giving thousands of golf lessons, I'm going to beg you to do this, okay? And that is, when you finish your coiling motion in the full backswing, try to have your arm raise finished at the same time rather than make the coil and then whip the arms up into position. The reason I mention that is, if you don't finish both moves at the same time, you're going to tend to, from after the coil's finished, you're going to tend to accelerate the club with your arms. Your arms will have to stiffen to stop the club, and you may even tilt your spine the wrong way. In any event, what you're going to do is overswing, and you're going to set yourself up to whip the club down with your arms, which we all know is the classic hit impulse, okay? Okay, so what we've said is the arms have raised more, the elbows are close together. I stopped the coiling motion and the raising motion at the same time. The only other thing you have to worry about at the moment is, is that club resting on your left thumb? And once again, is that wrist joint nice and free and relaxed so that centrifugal force can release it into the ball for you? Many players ask the question, well, how far back should I swing? And you'll notice that some people overswing, even without a good turn, they'll just take the club back like this with no coil. I'm asking you to make a good coil, set the club up on your left thumb here, 
the club should never really go past parallel. You can maybe get a little bit extra distance by going past parallel to the ground here, but the potential risks are so great that I think it's not really worth your trouble. So you'll play much better by stopping your, your backswing arc somewhere just short of parallel to the ground or e exactly parallel to the ground, okay? Let's bring John back on and talk about the full downswing. We'll have John this way. And this brings up a term that's been used for many years in golf. It's called dropping it into the slot. Would you wind up for us, John? Okay, John's in a good backswing position. You've heard drop it into the slot. And all that means is let the right elbow fall down against the side again and ride along with the body for a moment until centrifugal force releases that angle late in the downswing. Okay, and notice that the word is drop the club into the slot, not yank it into the slot or pull it into the slot, but just let it fall at whatever speed gravity dictates right against your side because again, the arms are relaxed and they're free. They're gonna be swung by the body. Most players, as they tend to get into a full swing, especially with the driver or the one iron or the two iron, they tend to get tight up here and try to whack it with their arms, as you may well know. So I'm gonna ask you here to drop that relaxed Y into the slot, that right elbow into the slot, just like you did with the basic arc on lesson four. Now, one way to see if you're dropping the club into the slot here and letting centrifugal force release your relaxed arms in the downswing, again, is to monitor your grip pressure and make sure that you don't tighten up here, here, or here. Let's keep that nice and smooth. Now, we're going to, I'm going to watch John make a full swing now. Let's see if John can coil, shift his pivot points, get that centrifugal force, and finish the swing with no change in his grip pressure. Very nice. Let's face the camera and do that again. Very nice. Thank you, John. I'd like to demonstrate one full swing for you. Maybe we'll cut in a few shots of players hitting the full swing now. And you can see, are they setting their pivot points? Are they resting that club on their left thumb? And are they generating maximum momentum with the lower body? The arms are light as a feather.